Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Okay, so shall we start? So yes. yesterday, yeah, thanks. Yesterday we discussed on warehouse ox structure. We created a warehouse. We created a sorry. We created a storage type in a warehouse. Then we created storage sections. So today we are planning to create storage bins. Okay, and some uh, more ox structure element relevant to EWM. Okay, so I will uh, first start. You know, we understood what is bin yesterday, and today I'll start with creation of bin in EWM. Okay, so I'll be creating bin both, you know, manually as well and using template as well. Okay, so just give me a minute. I'll log in. So, the transition to create a single bin, okay, is uh, slash n slash scwm dash ls01, yeah. So, in this, uh, if we enter our warehouse, that is whkd, and we enter the any storage bin that we want to create in our warehouse. So let's say I create a bin name test. Okay. So you can see whenever you create a bin, the mandatory field here is the only the storage type. Okay. So we can take any of our storage type, let's say eight thousand one, yeah. And storage section zero 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 one. We just created one storage section for all. Others bin type maximum weight, volume, capacity, we can fill as and when we need to test them. But, you know, these two are mandatory. Uh, then you have, you know, bin type, it will control, you know, what kind of pallets are allowed in this bin type, bin access type, which resources are allowed to access this bin. Then we already saw, you know, yesterday, the coordinates, aisle stack level. I'll be explaining what aisle stack level means in my you know, template part. Then we'll be doing the verification using this. So whenever the user scans test or if I enter one, two, three. So this is used in RF for scanning purpose. Whatever field we enter here, the storage bin is kind of you know verified using that verification. So what is RF verification and all those things also we are going to cover in our later session. Um, storage bin does not exist in we are creating, we are changing. Test does not exist in Vera AT. Why it was giving me the error? I mean, let me try again. 
thing from BW thing is activated with this. White is behaving strange. It was not asking us bin tab in the first one. Now it's created. Okay. So, so the bins you can create using ls1 transaction. The bins uh, you can you know kind of uh, display them in the bulk in transactions slash and uh, sorry. There's a separate transaction which is you know, use to display bins in bulk. That transaction is ls11, okay, slash and cwm ls11. You can enter your warehouse storage type and can get the list of all your storage bins. Okay, so this, this we created. Not sure what was the issue with test, but we managed to create test underscore one and gr zone okay so in your regular uh, uh, bin creation you know where um, even the businesses are creating you know doesn't necessarily go via this transaction because you know in regular business there are hundreds of transactions hundreds of bins to be created so not necessarily you know they will go each and every creation going for each and every bin creation manually so there are two three ways you can create bin okay one such way is creating through template okay. and another way is uh, uploading through a CSV file so I'll just show you both the ways So here yeah, you can see, you know, uh, for our warehouse, there will already be some uh, sequences. You know, these are the sequences coming from previous warehouses. I'll delete the unwanted ones. I mean, the ones which we are not using. So actually in these ones we are not using because these storage types are not there. Okay, but uh, let me delete these first. Okay. And then let me use the other ones as copy. Okay. So I think we have um, six I think we have six storage types. So I'll copy this. So I think if you notice here, this is a template into which it is trying to name the aisles in stack. I hope you know by yesterday's uh, video, you know, we, you might be clear of what um, racking arrangement is for storing the product. You know, you follow those racks. So what we do is basically for each racking you know we give a number of aisle number of stack number of height okay so a typical way of numbering a just give me a minute I'll just open one Excel to draw a aisle for you so do you know the aisles which we we just saw yesterday? You know those were like this. You know uh, these were just few aisles, but there were there was a racking. 
So if you observe from top, the top view, uh, you can see eyes like this. Eyes like this. Sometimes two eyes are grouped together into one, like it will be like this also. Okay, but let's say we assume that eyes are, you know, um, this is uh, the, you know, four lines of, you know, those uh, racking. Okay. So in this four, you know, let's say four or five racking. This is I1, okay. This is I2. This is I3. This is I4. This is I5. So five lanes, okay. Each of these lanes are called as I. Then, if you observe from the side, you know, this is, you know, and like let's say if you, this is the top view. And from the side view, if you see, then it will be, let's say, three height, yeah? Let's say three height. So it will be like this. So in this, it will actually three bins. These are three bins shown from top. Okay, these are those three bins. Okay, if you take this or this, then these are actually three bins shown from top. Okay. So these, this is height, okay, so it is in three levels, so it is height, let's say height A, B, C, okay, so, so this is, let's say, uh, this is um, height A, B, C, and let's say, for example, these when these individuals, you know, this entire one line, which is called a stack. So how many stack are there? Let's say this is one character field, we make it as two character field. If this is one, we make it zero one. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are twelve stacks. Okay, so what we'll do is so these are aisles, these are stack, and these are levels. Okay, so this is a typical way of numbering a racking. You know, this is you know the, the format may change. So. Uh, the format may change. I may use zero one here. I may use ABC there. But you know, this is a uh, very common way of numbering. You can imagine. So every bin is given a unique name. Okay, let's say a name is I stack. Stack is two character. Level is again one character. So in this format, I'll name a bin. So this bin becomes one I one stack O one and it's on the level A. Okay. Let me take any other bin. Let me take this bin. So this bin belongs to I two. Okay, and I'm talking about this bin which is at the center. Okay. So I two and it belongs to stack five. Okay. And it belongs to level it's in the middle lane, yeah, B. Okay, so this way, you know, each bin based on the bin name, you know, itself, you can go and identify. Yes, I have to go into this lane, so that this is in second idea. Let's say here a bin, it will be four. Okay, dash O nine dash C. If it belongs, let's say this particular level okay so if I see a bin with the name of I need to pick a bin or put away into this bin I'll directly go here you know in the fourth lane mm -hmm. then I know I need to go to the ninth stack then C means I know it's the third level so this way you know your pins are generally numbered in terms of your uh, 
uh, ion stack level. Okay. Then, if we talk about the just let me close this. So, if we talk about our template, we come to this first template. I mean, these templates are you know you can give an alignment also. So these templates are you know just telling you to give your range. So I'm saying I there is no level here. I one to I ten with an increment of one. Okay, and it is saying uh, take your storage type and say my storage type is eight zero zero one. Okay. I need to first delete. I need to first save my deletion. Okay, coming back to copy this. So these are you know some structures which are already made in the system. I'm just simply using them. So what how we you know kind of ensure that the bins are not repeated you know I told you yesterday bin name is unique so what I do here is I will enter a storage type name okay the first word character becomes storage type 8001 okay I can say if we go as per the number we have created so aisle is 1 okay so I can enter here let's say if I go as to the number I just created there in the Excel, it will be like this. One aisle, okay, starts with one, ends with five, okay, stack, ends with twelve, starts with O1, okay, and there is another one where we say, we say stack A, ends with C and we say the increment here is 1 and here is 0 1 um, I don't know how do we give increment for characters anyways I'll check that so start with 8 0 0 1 okay and let me keep it 1 again okay so this is Again, it's not a new week, it's a character, but let me see. Okay, so fast moving storage bin type 001. So let me see if we can give an increment to a character. I think we can't give it. So we'll have to take it as. Um, some numeric value we need to give here. Let's say 10, 20, 30. Okay. So we say like this 10 to 30 increment of 10. Okay. And we have to say this is level. And we have marked it as numeric. Okay, so so I just copied one. Next all, I'll not touch now. Let me first create for one. So this is the one which I just created as per our format. I think here we see A. You can also go with A, B, C, A to B with increment of one. Mm. So it should be alphabet. I meant I um, didn't see that. Okay, we can still try A, B, C here. Um, six. A and we can go with C 
and we have to tell this is as alpha magnification. So the increment of one will be considered accordingly. Okay. So let me say this. Then if we see this uh, again we will change it to ABC. So so this template you know when we create we can now use this template to create a bin. Okay. So you know this templates will be creating in configuration but the bin creation will come in the easy access screen. So here you have a uh, mass change but we have something called as um, generate, yeah, generate storage bin. So you can see that you know there is this entry which is already come here from our config. Okay. So we don't have to do anything when we are going live, we just have to say create bin. So you can see, you know, system will try to create 180 bins. 1, 1, A, then B, then C, then 1, 2, A. So if we count these bins, you know, this will be 180. 12 into 5 and 12, 5 is 60 and 3 levels, 180. So all our bins will be created like this, you know. And then when we go, so you know, based on the name, so the bins have names starting with 8001. So we know it is for 8001 storage type. Okay. So this is very typical way of, you know, giving uh, bin numbering. Hey Rohan, how did we arrive at 180? I did not get that part. Can you repeat it, please? Okay, see these are 12, 12 bins, okay, then 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, comes to 60, okay, and then this is one level, on the side view these are three levels, no, 60, 60, 60, is, is it clear? Yeah, yeah, 180, but how did you get this 180 in the structure is the question. Okay, okay. structure I got it, you know, based on the increment that I give. Uh, so if we see the structure again, uh, so if we see this structure, you know, this, I'm saying, you know, start with one, O and A, and then start with this. Oh, okay. And Got it. And okay. end with 5, 12, C, and give an increment of 1 for each okay. next bin. Mm -hmm. So, okay, got it. It's going to run. So, thank you, man. No problem. So, um, this is one way of creating a bin. Uh, you know, this is probably uh, used, but Let's say, for example, for bin creation, you know, a company has does not have a you know high stack level kind of arrangement, or the numbering is not you know in sequence. So, how they will do is uh, how they are going to create bins. They will be creating bins by you know I mean this is a new feature if you can bin. So if, this, if they are not incremental or are not in sequence or they use uh, uh, some random num numbering. So what they do is, you know, they keep prepare it in Excel, okay, and there is a transaction through which they can you know, load it in the system. Okay, so this is a, you know, this is a transaction through which, you know, they can load a CSV file and then, you know, just say create, it will create bins. Okay. So if you want, you can download this format like this. Okay. Same details, you ask the business to put it in Excel, convert it into CSV, and then, you know, uh, 
simply upload it here. See where your format over here. No? So again you have to give warehouse, storage, bin, storage type, section, bin type and you need to give your file stack and level details. Okay. So just to you know further elaborate, you know, we have just created this bin. So you will see, you know, based on the you know bin based on the uh, I stack level that we gave there, you know, they will already have uh, you know I stack level maintained. Okay, so I one stack for level B and I just maintain a coordinate X Y Z coordinate. You know, if you see the template. I just simply maintain X Y Z coordinate as one one one, so that that simply has come up here. We can change it as well, you know. So this is uploaded by the system. You can also change it, not necessarily, you know. It remains fixed. You can change the bin, delete the bins. So even though they are system generated, does not stop you. Okay. So loading storage bin is again, you know, very useful transaction. Specifically, where you your number ranges are, you know, uh, not the way, you know. Uh, in, in not in a particular sequence or something. Okay. So these are different ways of creating bins. Okay. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll quickly create bins in all the storage types using structures, so that we have enough, you know, uh, bins available for our testing. Yeah. So just created one. So, We have to take five more, yeah. Okay. So I'll take it in eight thousand two. So just let me simply you know create them. So this is the second one, then I'll say eight zero zero three. Okay, Rowan, is there a way that we can keep uh, bin unique across the warehouse? No. There is no way of doing I mean unique across the warehouse. Uh, yeah. It's already unique, isn't it? Yeah, I mean I know you're talking with a single warehouse, it's already unique, but I I meant uh, multiple warehouses. Uh, for all the warehouses. No, no, no. Okay. It's not possible, you know, by the standard. We can okay. see if we can get some parties or some user exits to achieve that, but it's not possible. Sure, thank you. I mean, for time being, you know, we'll not worry about, you know, the um, uh, the naming or the structure details. You know, we can mass change them only, you know, just for the ease of creation, you know, it will help us, yeah. Um, zero, zero, Oops. Zero, zero, four is one should be eight zero zero.
So you can see, you know, in this one, uh, it's going into IELTS stack level. There is another possibility, you know, bin depth and division, bin division. So you, you know, bin you can enter, you know, how much deep the bin is. That means it's one deep or five deep, and how many divisions are there in that particular bin. That also you can do. So. You know, it all depends on how the you know uh, warehouse is giving you what number ranges they are you know kind of having for the warehouse. Eight zero zero six. I'm just copying the standard ones you know, just to save time. Okay, so it should be the last one. Two, three, four, five, six. Let me save it. Okay, let's get the bins created. You know, the bin, whatever data they have, we can mass change it for our scenarios. But at least we have a lot of bins. Mm. So we create it for one. Let me check it for. So again, you know, based on the numbering, it is creating the number of bins. So once we create the bin, you know, uh, we'll go through another off structure uh, uh, element for warehouse, which is new in EWM, which was not there in WM. Uh, that is activity area. Okay. So once we understood bin now, so activity area is uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a virtual area basically, which kind of groups your bin together for any activity. So as the name suggests, it's a activity area. It basically, it has to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, it has a lot of relation with the activities that you perform in warehouse. So we have, you know, few standard activities in the warehouse which we can perform. And uh, these activities, you know, uh, activity-wise, we can group our bins together. So again, you know, like uh, storage activity areas are mandatory. So if we create bins and we don't assign them to activity areas, then we'll not be able to carry out any transaction because a lot of things depends on the activity area now. So once these bins are created, we understand some more details about activity area. So these are big number. 25,000. So there is another transaction, you know, which we use for um, assigning fixed bins to product, okay, which is a bin mat transaction. You just go in this transaction and enter your uh, product and assign it to a fixed bin. So fixed bin assignment is required because you know you give a bin for a product saying that the product should always be stored into this bin and should always be removed from a particular bin. Okay, in that, that case, you give this uh, fixed bin assignment. We are going to do it later you know, as part of our good receipt or good issue process where we, you know, kind of put the stock in a particular storage bin and we always remove it from there, okay. Um, okay. So, if we talk about uh, uh, activity area, then, as I said, you know, activity area is nothing but it groups together bin. 
you know for particular activity okay. so your your we have typically six or seven activities in the warehouse one is let's say for example i'll just list a few of them very common one one is picking other is put away one is internal movement okay one is replenishment okay one is uh, your uh, physical inventory okay <clears throat> and one is your posting change so these are the typical you know warehousing activities that we do picking we supply for customer put away you know when the product comes from vendors internal movement you move within the warehouse replenishment you move the stock from your reserve to your pick phase uh, it's again a kind of internal movement then you have um, uh, physical inventory process going on you can create your own activity as well you know in EWM so these are the six seven you know there are standard activities given by the system we can also create our own activity if we have any uh, activity or different kind of activity or even let's say picking you know, to differentiate a picking activity from a very special picking activity that you do so that's also possible so this activity area what it does it basically groups bin for each of the or for each of this activity okay so you do a lot of configuration at activity area level so your configuration then is applied to your group of bins okay so let's say for example you know um, see this grouping is irrelevant to your storage type and storage section you can group any storage type bins together okay so let's say for example when we do a good receipt our put away is done into this bin okay these set of bins so it, your put away once it is done into these set of bins you want you know this group of bins to be considered as one during put away and these group of bins you want to set it as one during picking so let's say for example when you are doing a put away you want system to only put away into these five bins okay and then when you pick it system one you want the system to search into this five bins this sorry these ten bins or whatever okay so it's basically you know your uh, grouping of bins so whatever <coughs> whatever uh, configurations are available at activity area level <clears throat> will be applied to this set of bins okay and let me give you a <clears throat> very basic example let's say this picking is happening from this bin sorry put away is happening into this bin so what you ought to have defined here this very common use of activity area is <clears throat> you define a sequence okay so when I go into put, a, put away what I want system to follow a sequence one two three four five okay now when I go you know during internal moment these products can be stored into these bins as well so let's say my picking I'm saying system to click into this bins I can give any sequence you know they were put in this sequence I can say start from here look here then look here then look here for picking look here look here look here if not then go for another area for picking but I can give a sequence for picking for this group same way this is a group of bin for put away let's say I have another group of bin where I will not go in this order I will go into reverse order of I will say first pick put here then put here then put here then put here then put here okay I mean just to further you know explain you we can also refer our structure that we created so here you know let's say for example a very typical example is you know here is your warehouse door okay so you enter from here and you exit from here okay so you enter from here you exit from here so when you enter you want to put it in the product in this sequence okay but this aisle aisle 1 and aisle 2 you okay you want to put it into this sequence you know the bins should be given you in this sequence like first you let's say you're taking 10 handling units 
the system should tell you first put it into this bin, then this bin, then this bin, then this bin. The sequence should be based on your you know stack. So what suppose you are carrying 10 bin, what system first tells you put it in uh, stack 1, then 12, then 4, then 8. You know the warehouse worker is going to go mad round about, you know, going here and there. He will say, hey, give me in sequence. Why I have to go front and, you know, forward? So this sequence will be managed by, you know, our uh, uh, activity area. Okay. Then my sequence goes like this. Okay. But when I am going to this, you know, this sec, the next set of, uh, sorry, next, you know, set of file, aisle 3 and 4. So once these two aisles are full, the stock are full, I'll be asked to go into these aisles, okay. So I'll be following this flow, right, I'll be coming here, I'll be coming here and then here. So then here, what I'm going to say is, hey, now here, the bins should be sorted in descending order for aisle 3 and 4. So I should be first said all bin, all HUs in 12 should be proposed to me first, then 9, then 6, then 5, 0, 3, 2, 1, right? So basically, you know, what you're doing here is you're sorting the way you're, you're, you want your sorting to be changed as per aisle, right? So what I'm going to do is these two aisles, I'll be grouping them into one activity area and I'll say sort it in, in the sequence of ascending ascending order of a, of my stack okay these two aisles sorted in the descending order of my aisles of my stack okay so start from 12 so <clears throat> ultimately you know he, your warehouse worker you know if he has 20 put away so he will go in sequence like this keep on putting away putting away putting away then this putting away putting away putting he will just will be proposed to put away, you know, in the sequence of the flow. Okay. So these two becomes one activity area where sorting is done in ascending. These two becomes another activity area where sorting becomes in descending. So all bins of this storage type, these two aisles will become one activity area. Okay. So this is, you know, the common reason, you know, sorting, which is one of the reason where you have, you know, uh, different activity area. There are many more reasons, but uh, this is one of the very basic reasons. And if, let's say, for example, you don't want these kind of things, you, know, you don't want to uh, differentiate based on activity area. I mean, you are not sure your flow of your material when you are creating a warehouse or it's a very new site and things are not clear to you. You can make it simple. You can say one storage type one activity area, all bins of the storage type into that activity area. Okay? So, but yeah, I mean, going forward, you may need to, you know, an activity area. So, as and when the requirement comes, you can create one. So, what's happening in this? Why it is not closing? Anyways, so coming back to our, um, um, it bins are also created now, so I can close this. Let's come back to our configuration node, where we create activity area for all our five or six storage types. So activity areas, you can see them created here in master data. So just to tell you, you know, you also have a config node for activity, so you can create your own activity. So this grouping of bins is activity area wise. So here this grouping, okay, I'm so sorry. This grouping is based on your flow of put away. You can do a different flow like this for your picking. Okay, you can go like this, then here, and then here. So this I let's say this I you can give a descending order for picking. You see because in the set you go when picking your flow is like this you don't come you don't get like this but you come like this like this from here or somewhere and then you enter like this like this so picking your flow becomes descending okay so it's based on activity area the activity as I said you know which activity you're performing 
So you can see there are typically these kind of activities, internal inventory stuff, you know, all replenishment, posting change, MFS, cross line put away. These are the standard ones. If, if you want, you can create our own one. Okay. So let's create activity areas. Since it is you know very uh, initial stage, we'll just create one activity area for our entire storage type. So this creation will not do, then you also have to you know, uh, assign it to the bins. So make sure for your storage type you are also creating your activity areas, if not then you know, it's going to create a problem. Um, there are many other configurations, you know, like queue determination and all, you know, which depends on our uh, activity area. Okay. So we will cover them, you know, as we go ahead. So a lot of configuration uh, is now linked to activity area. So some, you know, these configurations were at storage type level in Dublin. Now they are slightly, you know, going ahead with the uh, in the, uh, shifting to you know activity area wise because it gives them a lot of flexibility you know you can group any bins together so what I'll do is I'll say is you know this this is a screen where we assign you know activity area to a particular uh, storage bin okay so what I'm doing here is WH80 activity area which is my activity area it is uh, let's say 8001 what is the storage type so my storage type is 8001 so this activity area I can say only aisle 1 and end with aisle 2 okay if I want if I want this kind of flow just you know both of these should be assigned to one activity area so I can you know say start with aisle 1 end with aisle 2 okay, but for our uh, testing purpose, we'll just create one for the entire storage type. Okay, so all bins are assigned to 8001. Okay, same way, all bins of two are assigned to 8001. We keep it simple as of now. Three, four. Six and then we store. Okay. So we created each one activity area for an entire storage type. And then here we give the sort sequence. Okay. So what we give here, you know what is going to be a sorting for each of this activity. Okay. So um, let me copy one existing one and then we will try to then you see, see these are the main activities so based on activity you say what kind of sorting you want to do so see there are one two three four five six you know basic um, activities for each of these activities you know for each of these activities So each of these activities you can give your sorting direction by stack, by level, by bin division. Okay. So let's say you know I'm saying for WH80, okay, activity area 8001. Okay, this is the activity area we just created for internal movement, and these are the bins you do sorting in ascending, ascending order. Alternating means you know one left, one right, or non-alternating means just simply straight ahead. Okay, so I'm just keeping it, you know, uh, for these eight zero zero one. Yeah, for inventory also I'm just keeping it. Just there is already an existing sequence. I'm just copying it 
because as of now we are not testing the sequence. Whenever we test it, we just come here and change it. So for picking, again, you know, there is some sequence given. Uh, so I will do this WGAT. There is again, you know, some sequence for photo. For replenishment. Or posting changes. So you can see these are the you know different different uh, activities you are going to perform in 8001. Same same way 8002, Okay, and there is some sequence given to it. Okay, so just quickly copy these for another uh, storage step also. This is one time activity, you know, when, and then you change it time of your warehouse station then you change it as in when you need it. So I'll create it for others, you know. And so one just quick setting I want to show you before we end for today is you know we created when you know we can see we created activity area, we just, just assigned bin to activity areas. Okay. Then okay. And then we have to go with one transaction which is sorting. Okay. So if we see our bins, you know, the bins that we have created. So one very important thing that we need to make sure for our bins, let's say 8001. Okay, I'll show you what happens when you do a sorting. So let's say in storage bin one 8001, any bin you take, the activity area will be blank. Okay? So what we have done is after we create config, you know, or each time a bin is created, we need to run this transaction slash o s c w m s b s t. That means sort storage bins. So you can see now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort my activity area 8001, which I created for 8001 storage time. Okay. So you will see the difference. You know, once I sort it, then the bins will be assigned to activity area. See, activity area we created in config, but then these bins are master data. So for the configuration to be applied to the bin, we need to you know run this bin sorting transaction. Either you run it each time you create bin, or do you run it, you know, as a bad job in your company. Okay. So you can see bin sorting done completely. So it just go and execute it. So you can then refresh this you will see your bin will be assigned to that activity area. Okay, so you can see for internal 8001, for inventory 8001, picking, put away, replen, all, you know, it is assigned to the same activity area. For some of our exercises, for let's say for physical inventory, we will not assign it to 8001, I'll change it to 0001 or 002, something like that. Okay, so depending on your requirement or let's say for put away I'll, not, I'll change it we can change it you know we can do the config and then sort it again then that particular activity area will be assigned to it so this is important you know before you start using a warehouse the bins should have your activity area assigned to it I just gave you a few examples queue determination you know your 
RF needs, you know, RF task execution. You do the task, you create your warehouse activity on the on the RF. So that needs this, you know, activity area to be assigned to the bin. If not, then the queue will not be assigned, and then you know you will not be able to work on RF. Okay. So there are because there are many configurations, you know, like queue determination, you know, your creation rule. I mean, many many things will not work, you know. Uh, without this, so make sure you know you always have this for your bins. I mean, all bins in 8001 will 8001 will now have you know activity area assigned to it. So bin, you know, it's basically sorting you know based on the direction we give ascending, descending. You know, it's sorting them in a particular sequence. Okay, so the background or sequence number is assigned to them. Okay, so sort sequence. This is the based on the configure the background or sequence number is given to them. And they get the bin get assigned to activity area. That means they are being sequenced in the background based on the config. Okay. So uh, this is you know this is this activity area for you. Tomorrow, what we are going to do is we are just going to cover some more structural elements. Probably will not go in much detail about those staging area. Just see their relevant nodes. And I want to start you know uh, the activity area part. Okay. And probably we'll try to complete activity area by uh, tomorrow or before uh, weekend by Friday, Friday, so that you can practice um, these things. So after this, week one will be completed. We will be starting with week two, where we will be focusing a lot on master data. So you know we haven't touched upon material master. We haven't touched upon you know. Bin is kind of you know it's also called a box element is also master data it's kind of both so we've just taken it so next week we'll be you know covering the uh, product master in detail we'll be covering uh, I mean we have already seen customer vendors you can quickly go through that packing specification resource master all the master data is in more detail yeah and uh, Probably we, after week three, we will go into scenarios like inbound and outbound, mm -hmm. internal, and all those stuff. Uh, yeah. As of now, we stand here. We will stop here today. Some more structure elements are there, like warehouse, doors, staging areas, and work centers, which we will see tomorrow. And we will start uh, availability group and concept. You know, you. Uh, which we had parked during our integration, so we'll go and you know cover that uh, stock ties and availability group thing in our uh, tomorrow session. Okay, once we complete the structure elements. So today, what we discussed was bins, different ways of creating bins, and we discussed on what is the activity area. We created activity areas, and uh, same way we create. I'll just create activity areas for you know the other storage types as well. Four, five, six as well and sort the bins. Okay. So any question on today's session? Anything? Any yeah, hi on the buzz here. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is for, for like uh, for single activity area. Uh, can we assign a single activity or are we have, or have always assigned to a multiple activity like for one to six you you have assigned? Sorry, can you tell me again? Uh, I don't uh, for uh, always activity area, for active single activity area, we have always assigned a multiple activity. That uh, activity area have relations mm -hmm. with activity one to one, or uh, can be possible, or it's always one to many. Like activity, you are assigning six activity to uh, suppose eight eight thousand one, you are assigning the multiple activities. Mm -hmm. So yeah. can be possible that we have single activity in real time? Yes, yes, yes. Quite possible. You can have single activity as well. Okay. That's not an issue. You can have a single activity if you want. And you know, let's say for uh, picking, you can have you know sequence one, two, three, four, five. You know, let's say aisle one and aisle two are belonging to eight zero zero four underscore one activity area. Okay. IL2 and 3 are belonging to 8004 underscore 2. You know, so it all depends, you know, 
how you want to set it up. Okay, so this is we are following the standard one. I'm just keeping it, you know, simple one to one, and you know, I'm just keeping one, you know, activity area for the entire storage type. Okay, thank you. We're just creating a framework, you know, so that when we are, you know, uh, doing a scenarios, we just have to come here and change the config. You know, we don't have to create you know, a lot of data in advance, uh, not, not a lot of data, you know, when we are doing our scenarios. So just to save time in our uh, later sessions, I'm just keeping them created for us. Anything else? Any other questions? No, this is off plate. Uh, only thing is, uh, I think these documents are not shared with me. I'll send you a mail if you can share this. Uh, I think yeah, it's shared with you. Can you check your Google Drive? No, I have not received it. One second, I'll check again. But I'll send you a mail if it's not been shared. Yeah, yeah. Send me your G okay. Send me from a Gmail ID. I have definitely shared with you. You, you know, send. But you can check your drive. It should be there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we end the session for today. Then we catch up again tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Thank you.